Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland Andre is having his dinner in the background Chomping away Might be able to hear him just about <laughs> He's uh He's worked up a hunger. I'm not going to go into details, but he's been very active for the last hour or so. And uh, now he's hungry, so he's eating his dinner. I think it's date night for him. <laughs> and um, yeah, only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. This is let me bore you to sleep the point behind this is that I just talk about whatever for about an hour and it's boring and it's calm relaxing and you can just drift off to sleep that really is it I've made quite a few of them of these podcasts uh, 252 I think so far so it's quite a lot I've also got other podcasts deep sleep deep bleh, deep sleep Whisper Hypnosis and Sleep Hypnosis Weekly. I've got another podcast called Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Other podcasts for smoking. Uh, another podcast for self-development. Another podcast for chronic pain relief. So there's quite a few different ones available to choose from and everything that I do is available on my website jasonnewland.com including a testimonial page where you can read what other people have written about me and you could write something yourself if you fancy it and there's a page there where you can support me as well uh, so yeah that's kind of everything so today, I'm going to undo my zip. It's for my, my jacket or my top. Uh, that's it. If it was my flies, that would be a long fly, wouldn't it? Can you imagine that? I'm just going to undo my flies. <laughs> that's, that's a... That's a impressive fly, isn't it? Anyway, Andre's... So I don't think Andre knows what to do because I've been moving stuff around and he doesn't like it. He just looked at me, he knows I'm talking about him. I've moved his tube that he likes to climb through and I've put my abdominal board in its place. And now he's sniffing around that and he's sort of, he's a little bit confused. Where's my stuff? Where's my tube gone? But I'll put it the other side of the room. Because I'm trying to tidy this place up. And instead of doing it all in one go, I'm just doing it in bits. Each day I do a bit more. Each day I do it tidy a bit more. which is kind of what I've been doing. So today I put a few bits into the storage cupboard. Um, a set of drawers, not drawers, um, a bookcase that has to be put together, but I just, the bits of wood were standing up in the bedroom, not on their own, 
they don't have legs they're not alive um, but they were and Andre was trying to push them over and they were heavy heavy bits of wood heavy shelving so I didn't want them to uh, but first thought it would make a quite a bit of noise if I'm in bed but also uh, didn't want it landing on him so but he was determined to push <laughs> he was determined to push them over so I put them into the storage cupboard so we can't get to them I put the vacuum cleaner in there so I've done a bit of tidying up which is good I mean yesterday I'm not sure if I mentioned it during I don't even know if I did a did a recording yesterday I let me bore you to sleep one I don't think I did I'm not sure but um, my light I think it was Friday my light bulb went again do you remember at the beginning when I told you that I talk about boring stuff I'm not joking it was, it was no joke I really do talk about boring stuff and th those of you that have got in contact with me can also vouch that I'm really boring <laughs> it's really I really am this boring I'm not there's there are no hidden depths <laughs> it's it's all on show it's uh so you can never really be disappointed because I announce myself before I enter the room kind of all my boring ness so the light bulb went in the living room again on Friday so I changed it and as I was changing it the whole thing just came out the the whole kind of <clears throat> excuse me the light socket came out and it was just leaving these metal bits that were bare and I thought ooh don't want to go near that phoned the council I said uh, do you change light bulbs and they say no I said well it's not really a light bulb it's the light fitting has come apart and I'm not an electrician and I don't want to touch it and she said, well, we'll send someone around and put it down as an emergency. I said, I'm not sure if it really should be an emergency. Uh, I do have a lamp, like a, a quite a bright lamp I was, you know, that I can use. I left it there, so I was just expecting someone to come around. But no one did. No one came around Saturday, no one came around Sunday, no one's been around today either. So yesterday, which was Sunday, bearing in mind it's now, it needs lights on by about four, possibly earlier now, indoors. It's, it's, light, it's lighter outside than inside at three o'clock. And I like to see things. I don't know if that makes sense. See, I wear glasses for distance, but not just distant distance, but even the television that's, I don't know, six foot away from me. I need my glasses to read the subtitles six foot maybe seven foot I don't know it's hard to tell I can't, I can't I feel like I should measure it but I don't have my measuring stick so
having the lights off, no light and just a television, is a little bit of a strain on my eyes. I like to have a light on in the room. I never just never just watch the television without any lights. Also, I don't generally just sit here watching television. I do other things at the same time. So I'll be, maybe I'll be playing with my phone, or I'll be on the laptop, you know, just doing, just fiddling around, you know, maybe with the the website or doing a little bit of research and stuff like that, you know. So yesterday, when the light bulb, went the, so for was it Friday? So, so Friday night, Saturday and Sunday, I had my lamp, which was fine. And then I turned it off. I turned it off because there was this weird light on the shining against the front door. I figured it was the lamp because there's nothing else it could have been but I just wanted just to, to see because it just looked a bit strange and it had been intriguing me for the last few days on and off for short periods of time so I turned it off and the light wasn't there anymore on the front door Bearing in mind I'm in the living room, I'm not really anywhere near the front door, unless you class seven footsteps as being near, but, you know, it's not near near, it's not, it's near if you were looking at the map of a world, it's very close, but, so I thought, oh, okay, that must be what it was, then I went to turn the light on again, and the bulb went. I thought it might be the socket. I thought it might have blown a fuse or might have short circuited something. So I went into the storage cupboard or the storage room rather and had a look at the electricity thing. Nothing had been tripped, so that was all fine. So I'm just sitting here in darkness. And this was about about eight o'clock seven seven o'clock eight o'clock at night and I had the television on and I had my laptop on and although technically I mean there's the electricity was still on so I could still use my laptop but I couldn't see couldn't see the keyboard I could see it, I knew it was there, you know, I was aware of its um, presence, I don't know, I knew, you know, I knew the keyboard was there, just like, turn the light off, I know there's a ceiling there, I can't see it, so I knew it was there, plus I could put my hands on it, not the ceiling, the, the keyboard of the laptop. So there's really, and I can't read, although I do, I can read. I mean, I've got a Kindle, but even, it's, it's the very basic Kindle. It's not one of the fire ones. I used to have one of those, but it broke, believe it or not. I don't know what the hell happened, it just broke. So I got a Kindle, and it's the, you know, the very basic paperweight one, you know. But I need a light behind me in order to read it, or a light above me, in order to sort of read it properly, without straining my eyes. So I'm thinking, oh, 
what am I going to do? Because it was too early for me to go to bed. And I don't think a light bulb going should be a reason for the day to end, you know. But I do have, I've had a few issues with light bulbs over the years. So what I did is I phoned my friend up as a neighbour and I said can I come down for five minutes I need to speak to you he said yeah came down why well, I, I went and visited him knocked on the door he answered the door and I said uh, my light's gone um, the bulb's gone on my light and the electrician hasn't turned up to fix this socket of the electrical appliance that the bulb fits into, you know, in the ceiling. He said, "You he said you mean a light socket?" I said, "Yeah, yeah." The, you know, the dangly thing, a bit like a, like one tonsil, kind of dangling. Not really like a like, like a, I suppose a tonsil if it was a light bulb. I don't know. And he said, "Yeah, you're getting off track a little bit. So you've got no light." I said, "Yeah." I said, "Have you got a a light I can borrow, like a lamp?" And he said, "Yeah, you can borrow this one." So normally he he has that lamp and he doesn't have the main light on so I was kind of I was inconveniencing him but he you know he's fine about it so I borrowed that lamp and I said it's one of the stand up ones it doesn't tell jokes it just you know it's it has a little stand at the bottom well it's quite a big stand really but and it supports the the rail that goes up and then there was a light bulb and a like this metal lampshade thing and so I borrowed that I said I'm going to bring it back tomorrow and then I brought it up I plugged it in I plugged it in first of all the other side of the room but then that was just I mean it was very um, dim very dim not very bright at all because the lampshade is metal I mean it, there's holes in the metal otherwise it wouldn't have any be no light at all would there <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be pointless <laughs> it's totally ridiculous, isn't it? A light bulb inside a metal box. That's a lovely lampshade. <laughs> I think. I have to turn the main light on so I can have a look. Get my torch out. So I turned that on, but it was. I still couldn't see the keyboard. Or I could see the keyboard, I could see the shape the outline but not the numbers and the letters and I am fairly competent at typing not like with speed but with a degree of accuracy so my fingers manage to find the correct letters without needing to look at the keyboard sometimes which yeah, I think that's quite cool actually I never formally learnt to type but I have been typing on keyboards for many many years haven't had used computers at work and typing in information continuously all day every day for years and years so 
I'm not at that level anymore. You know, I'm not. I'm not as not. I don't type as quickly as I used to because I don't need to, and I don't do much typing, other than uh, searching or a lot of copy and pasting and you know stuff like that. You know, when it comes to website or posting podcasts and stuff as such and the only thing is when it's dark sometimes I I did test it I tested it and I thought maybe I can do it from feel from feel alone because I'm pretty good with my fingers quite good at finding the right places as I said and especially my name I can do that but then I've typed my name in so many times searching for it on Google you know and um, it's okay because it comes up on the screen so I'm looking at the screen and just typing it's okay when it works so when the, the letters click properly and everything's fine but then there's a problem if, if it doesn't because then I've got to try and find the correct words or the correct letter that's when it gets a little a little bit more tricky it's I was going to say it's a little bit like trying to eat a cactus with a smile on your face but it's probably not anything like that it's a little bit awkward it's a little bit e, you know so the lamp that my friend lent me was the other side of the it wasn't the other side of the room I don't live in the mansion you know it wasn't like oh let me get my binoculars out so I can see where I put it, it you know I could see it even with my eyesight I could see it I mean my eyesight isn't that bad it's not I haven't got like really thick glasses that are magnified you know I'm not like walking around in the summer setting setting trees on fire or something you know from the the sun rays I'm not they're not that bad they're just they're just my eyesight is just not as good as it used to be um Yeah, that's just this is it. I don't really care, really. <laughs> it's weird. I don't, I'm not. I don't. I must have a different uh, way of thinking. Maybe in some ways, but I don't expect to be able to do now what I could do everything I could do twenty years ago. I don't. Why should I? Why should my eyesight be exactly the same as it was when I was 30 or 20? Oh my God, 30 is nearly 20 years ago. Wow. Yeah, let's move on from that. See, I don't mind. I'm 49 and I do mind. (laughs) I really do. But I pretend I don't mind. And it doesn't really hit home until I think that 20 years ago I was just coming up to being 30. Well, I was 29. 20 years ago. 30 years ago I was 19. 40 years ago I was 9 so how many months is it before I'm 50 I'm 50 at the end of August so it's now let's say end of October so it's it's not because it's now the 11th of November I think or 12th of November so 12th uh Let's say the end of November, for argument's sake. 
December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. So it's nine months. So basically, 50 years ago, I was swimming around with all me millions of brothers and sisters and completely oblivious to um, what was about to happen. I had two brothers on the outside, but I was still on the inside. <laughs> I was on the inside with my millions and billions of other brothers and sisters and uh, isn't it weird you think about it how many of you how many uh, the possibilities of you or me actually being born out of or making it to the to the Filipino tube it's like how do you you know what I mean there's like millions I don't know if it's billions but millions and millions of you know little um, according to school it was little fishes little fishes with tails Little tadpoles, all swimming. I got a mild. You know, say that you can kind of remember. You know, with hypnosis, sometimes you can do past life regression, or you know, I'm not really into that. I've never done it. Really, I've never done it with someone, and would never would, because I'm more my hypnosis or my hypnosis the kind of hypnosis that I do is based more on um, we're trying to help people in the way that I do if does that make sense I realise that people that maybe do the past life regression um, giantly helped by it do you like that wording? That giantly helped. I've got a friend, a really um, one of the people that I respect most in the world. He's called Gunasara, and he's a Buddhist. He's a he's a ordained Buddhist, and he's he's phenomenal. He's a phenomenal person. Like he's just, um, I don't know, he's got more wisdom in his little willy than I'll ever have, you know, in my whole life. He's just, he's, <laughs> I just said I respected him, but I do. He's an amazing, amazing person. And there was a reason why I'm telling you about this amazing person and I've completely forgotten. Had something to do with sperm. I don't know. No, that doesn't make sense. Oh no, he had um, past life regression, and he told me about it, and he found it really useful. This is a long, long time ago. So, and I suppose it fits together with the Buddhists' uh, belief system, in a sense of past lives being reborn um, sort of rebirth yeah so I've got this this little nagging memory that I was swimming Towards the, well, I think onion bargy, but I, just, I was swimming towards whatever the, the place I was supposed to be swimming towards. And I changed my mind. 
as I'm likely to do. I'm quite a, a mind changer. Um, oh, it's caused so many problems in my life. I've uh, so I was dating someone recently, and she was the most amazing person. And it was very brief the dating. I got to know her a little bit before we actually sort of kind of got together, and she was amazing in every single way possible. You know, just absolutely lovely person. And then I sent her a text saying, "I'm not ready for a relationship." And as soon as I sent it, I regretted sending it. Like I made that decision and then I changed my mind. And I suppose in a way, I didn't feel ready. But it was like, why didn't I just keep quiet and just see how it goes, you know? So I'm, you know, I remember years ago, when I was in Wales, I didn't live in Wales. I wasn't inside a whale. I'm talking about the the, the, the town, well, the country. The so I don't know if anyone's never if anyone's never been to Wales. And let's say you're abroad, you're living in America or Canada or Australia, and you've never been to Wales. Then, if you ever get a chance, visit. So if you ever come to this part of the world, you know, Europe, or if you go to in, come to England, Scotland, or somewhere like that, it's quite, it is a distance, it's a travelling distance, but um, I think people that live in England and the UK they have a different grasp of distance to what people in America have or someone in Australia because in America it's such a massive country that you can meet up with a friend for a night out or for the weekend and you get a plane to where they are or you travel for like seven hours to to visit your family for the, for the day or for the evening or whatever because the big distance here if you have to travel for more than an hour that's a long way that's for us well for me especially I walk so an hour of walking really does give me sore tootsies so I kind of I have travelled long distances kind of but I suppose the longest distance as we're talking about it apart from to Ireland also to the Isle of Man but this is kind of it's because of the where you go from See, when I went to the Isle of Man in 2004, it was the last time I ever went anywhere or had any kind of a holiday with a family, with family members. And it was also the first time since the age of probably 14 that I'd ever been on holiday with family members. So 2004, I was 33 when I went away to the Isle of Man. So what's that, 14, 24, yeah, so nearly, nearly 20 years between the last time I was on holiday with my dad and the second time I was on holiday with my dad. And I've always thought if I ever did come into some money like a, a, like a lottery win or um, you know sort of 
I'd like to go on a cruise and take my parents on a cruise and maybe the family and I kind of would like to not go but maybe go but get a room the other side of the of the ship <laughs> it's just just so I can hide no but I think it'd be really nice because my dad likes loves going on cruises now he's retired and he deserves it he's worked really hard all his life right the way up to but well, he still does work not not work work but he's always doing stuff he's always doing stuff for the family and working on the house you know all that stuff because he's uh, he's an electrician well he was an electrician um, but he could pretty much do anything apart from ballet I don't see him in a tutu I can't well I've never seen him in a tutu doesn't mean he's never worn one I don't really I, I want to get that image out of my head but I think it would be really nice to go and take them on a cruise I don't know what kind of cruise I don't it'd have to be somewhere where I didn't have to get off the boat if I didn't want to you know but like excursions were optional not like you must get off and visit this castle we have an orchard to visit what you mean a place with apple trees <sighs> only got no pictures to show me that'll do but you know it's I don't I'm not a traveller you know in the sense of I don't know I've never really done much travelling I never I dated a girl once I had to, I did actually have a relationship once with this uh, she was 17 and I was 25 and she was a trainee nurse and we fell in love and all that stuff she was way more mature than I was uh, but she was a traveller like proper I say a traveller she wasn't I mean she, she liked to travel that's what I mean and she was half Italian so she spent I think because her dad was Italian and her mum was something else and she was half Italian so it was only I think it was, it was the top half <laughs> I don't know what that means but she loved travelling and she spent a lot of time in Italy during the holidays when she was at school she'd have the summer holidays and all that stuff and she'd go to Italy and she could speak Italian fluently and I quite liked it when she spoke Italian because then I didn't have to pretend not to listen it was quite <laughs> ooh so I'd love to go back to that time I kind of like to go back and just revisit the girlfriends but as they were then but as I am now which would be freaky do you imagine can you imagine someone 30 or 20 years older than the the person you're dating just turns up I probably think I'm, I'm my dad or something and just say to them look I'm sorry that's it and then just walk away just say I'm sorry he's I'm just 
really immature emotionally um, but hopefully by the time I'm 49 I'm going to have to say by the time I'm 50 now because I've kind of clearly proved lately that I'm perhaps still not but uh, by the time I'm 60 I will be so mature which will probably be even freakier to them like why is this bloke telling me this um, why does he look like Jason maybe that did happen that will explain some of the weird breakups but uh, I didn't really come on here to talk about relationships that's why I, I don't give people relationship advice not that many people ask it but occasionally people do and I almost find I want to just tell them to do complete opposite to what I used to do I think I was a funny boyfriend and that was it that's the only thing that I'd kind of be remembered for. I was probably a bit wacky, a bit... Very unlike anybody else. Yeah, I suppose that's the only... It's not necessarily a good thing, but... No one that I ever dated will ever have dated anyone before or since that was like me. Which probably is a good thing. For them well that's a weird noise did you hear that buzzing I think it was a laptop just gonna have a little drink I do wonder You know, people say, if, oh, if I had a time machine, I'd go back and I'd... There's, there's a cliche, isn't there? There's one cliche that a lot of people say. I won't repeat it because we all know what the cliche is. But I don't think I would... do that. I think if I had a time machine... I think I'd go forward because I'm not really that interested in the past I know I talk a lot about it but I can't talk about the future because I don't have a time machine wow if I had a time machine I'd be talking about stuff that happened or that's going to happen in 17 years time or 25 years time I'll be talking about the election results and you know I would because it'd be fun maybe I should start doing a few special recordings based upon that premise of yeah I could couldn't I I went, went forward in the time machine. So I don't know what I would do. I have to give that a bit of thought. If I had a time machine. There are a few people I'd quite like to meet. Because um, you know, there's, there's another cliche that people say, isn't it? It's sort of if you could have if you could have a a dinner with a bunch of people who would it be you know who would you invite to lunch or who would you invite to dinner you know anyone in history um 
however far back in the past, you know, alive or not, you know, who would you invite? Now, I wouldn't want to do a dinner party. I think I'd quite like to meet the people individually and see what they're really like not see what they're like in a public setting because you know um, this might get a more of a sense of who they are as a person and so I think the people that I would choose to meet Malcolm X didn't see that coming did you well the reason for Malcolm X is because I used to read his speeches when I was 20 I've, I've got a book of his speeches and I've also listened to them and I, I bought tapes of them and of course with YouTube you can watch it and stuff you know watch the speeches but what I found he was so articulate also funny and really got his point across um, without religion or without uh, you know any of that just real human humanistic kind of yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, I just found him to be fascinating. Who else? Not Genghis Khan, no. Um, Richard Pryor is, I mean, in the comedy world, you know, sort of, he is classed as the top of the tree you know you've got Bruce Lee in the martial arts world even though he's not been around since 1979 or whatever he and loads of other actors have come along and been more successful had more successful movies and everything Bruce Lee is always at the top he stayed at the top the king of kung fu Elvis Presley plenty of other people have outsold Elvis made more money than him that are alive now Garth Brooks as an, an example but Elvis will always I still not always but he still is classed as the king the king of rock and roll even though he hasn't been around for a long time so there seems to be like this top bit and Richard Pryor even though hundreds or well, thousands of thousands but loads of really brilliant comedians have come along that were Possibly equal, if not better, than Richard Pryor. But will never get, they will never be classed. It's almost royalty. Richard Pryor is comedy royalty. It's a bit like Laurel and Hardy or Charlie Chaplin, you know, kind of in in there Charlie Chaplin was the king of silent silent uh, comedy movies Oliver Oliver and Hardy is it Oliver and Stan Laurel and Hardy they were the top double act in the old movies and even though loads of rubber came after, 
they still stay at the top. Like in history, they always, you know, classed as the greatest. So that's not why I like Richard Pryor. I liked him because he made me laugh. You know, I didn't even know he did stand-up comedy when I was a kid. I watched him in Silver Streak and um, Stir Crazy, uh, See No Evil, Hear No Evil, although that was after I, I discovered him as a stand-up. But I saw him in... I watched every single Richard Pryor film that he ever made when I was a kid. Um, and I didn't really know he did stand-up. I did not watch stand-up comedy back then. It wasn't available to me. I didn't really discover stand-up until I was in my late teens. It started to be on television and... I'd, I did know it from being on television when I was a kid. There used to be stand-up comedy, but not like adult stand-up comedy, you know? Well, maybe I did see a bit, but I don't recall it. But Richard Pryor, he was, he was in a film called The Toy, and... he basically was his job was to look after this little kid called Master Bates <laughs> and uh, also yeah he was in Superman Superman 3 which I think he he star he was the star of that movie. He made that film what it was. Obviously Superman, you know, helped. But I think it really having him there, Richard Pryor, it yeah, I don't, I can't imagine anyone else doing what he did. But he just was really really cool. But anyway, so I quite like to have met Richard Pryor. I was supposed to be telling you about my light bulbs. There's a light bulb moment then. I need to tell you about my light bulbs. Let's just finish this bit there. Let's have a look. Who else would I like to... Um, Jane Mansfield I'd like to have met Jane, I'd like to meet Jane, Man Jane Mansfield um, who else singers Terence Trent Darby was one of my all time favourite singers He's just so amazing. Um, what other singers? I quite like to have met the lady from the Cranberries. I mean, she's no longer around, but um, she's for me. There is no singing voice that competes with hers. It's just, just you know, personally, I find it just be perfection. Just absolutely amazing voice. Just the style of singing, you know. I think I'd have liked to have met Elvis. But. Well, yeah, I would. So I would have liked to have met him. But probably when he was younger, before he had like all the entourage and he was carrying around guns and, you know, I'd just like to have met him 
when he was younger and maybe when he was like in the movies, you know. He looked a bit more chilled out then. What other people? Milton Erickson. The... And Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee, of course. I don't know why I say of course, but Bruce Lee. And again... You know, Bruce Lee meant quite a lot to me. Because I had a poster of him on my wall. When I was seven. And... This was at a time when I'd never had a poster on my wall my entire life. You know, this is the first time. It was almost the first time I'd lived in a stable home, kind of. So having that picture of Bruce Lee next to me, even though I wasn't old enough to watch the movie, it... um. It has an, I have an emotional connection to it and I knew that I wanted to do martial arts from a very early age but I wasn't allowed to because I was too young um, but I ended up doing it when I was 14 13, 14 and so Bruce Lee definitely I quite like to meet Jackie Chan. Just sort of let him know how much I enjoyed his his early movies. They just make me laugh. It was so funny. The, the those were the ones that he did before he was famous. Um. Yeah, probably in the seventies, maybe the eighties, early eighties like Drunken Master and uh, other ones sort of that kind of thing and they were they were made in China I think but dubbed into English which I like I prefer that over subtitles because especially with a uh, Jackie Chan film because it's so full of action I kind of want to watch what he's doing. I can't do that and read at the same time. I'd quite like to meet the Queen. I know that you know, the likelihood of that ever happening is pretty much zero, but. I'd like to meet the Queen. I mean, she is... She's the Queen. And I... I'd like to meet... I'd like to meet... Prince William and Prince Harry. Because of their work with mental health. And... Having watched them grow up, you know, from babies, even though I was very young myself when they were born, but I've got about 10 years on them, I think. I think I was about 10 when they were born, when uh, Prince William was born. Maybe younger, I don't know, but I think that would be cool. Keith Floyd, the chef, he seemed like someone that would be really interesting to to have met. And there's some people I'd like to meet, necess- not necessarily sit down, but just, just sort of meet. Like Big Daddy. He was like huge, well, he was huge, but he was also a huge star in UK wrestling and there's lots of sports people that I'd like to meet mainly boxers if I'm honest 
Um, and that list is it's a very long list of boxers that I'd like I'd like to meet them all really I kind of like to be involved in the boxing world if I could figure out a way of offering my services to boxers then I could be involved and I could you know be there with them the boxer before the fight maybe help with motivation with maybe some hypnosis or something like that and just be part of uh, like a you know these big occasions I think it would be absolutely amazing I'd love that I'd like to meet a lady from the past called Georgia who I haven't seen since about 2002 Um, but let's go back to famous people there's some people I'd like to meet, I'd like to meet, there's a girl that I was really close to when I was about seven, seven years old. I'd just like to meet her and just say hello, see if she remembers me. I mean, chances are she won't, but we were really, we got on really well. used to chase each other around and stuff pull each other's hair you know it was love obviously yeah there's other people as well but Sigmund Freud would be an interesting person to meet and Carl Jung and Carl Rogers and you know the people from like the psychotherapy uh, the origins of those people like Fritz Perls and uh, people that were mavericks and sort of created their own style of doing things their own philosophy that would be interesting I'm trying to think of who else That's it, really. There's loads and loads, but I can't think of... can't really think of many off the top of my hat. Hmm. So I borrowed the lamp. Eventually, I moved it to behind my desk a table where I do the you know use the laptop and I was able to see the keyboard once I took the lamp off because the lamp bit the the lamp shade was metal <laughs> so I took that off and it was a little bit brighter and then today I went out well last night rather I ordered a lamp online you, with the catalogue so I can pay it back and you know over the next eight months or something and I've got a few other little bits and then I went out and I got a little lamp 
in case because I didn't know when the other one was going to turn up. Plus, I needed to return the other one to my friend. And I didn't want to spend another evening without any light. So I got this cheap lamp. looked like, you know, a bedside thing. And I get home. The delivery people still didn't turn up. And they haven't turned up at all. All day. And... I was looking at the socket, the dangly bit, you know, the electric for the light bit. And I thought, you know what? Let's have a look at this. Let's see if I can fix it. So I'll make sure it's turned off. So it's not... Yeah, it's turned off. I think. And... I look at it and I figure out well, that bit goes in the hole it goes in there and those two holes and I thought does it matter which hole it goes in and I was like having flashbacks <laughs> to when I was like 18 like, oh, but then because you know I've never been much good with light bulbs and then I just, I thought, yeah, this makes sense. And I screwed it together. Got a good screw. And it fitted together perfectly. Put the light bulb in, turned the switch, and the light came on. Done. There was nothing wrong with the lights, the lights at all. It was just, it was loose because it had become unscrewed. So what I did is I took my friend's lamp downstairs. I also gave him the bedside lamp. I said that just to say thank you. Because I've got another lamp coming. Like a big one that's going to be sort of reaching over my desk. Like one of those old desk ones that sort of point towards the desk. So that will be coming probably tomorrow or the day after, I don't know. And I don't need one for next to my bed because the light switch is literally an arm's length from my bed. Um, and if I was to read, I'd need something a bit stronger than uh, the you know a, death, a little lamp because it was I actually went, I went to Argos and bought it and the lamp was £6 and I said I need to get some uh, some light bulbs and she said well, I don't recommend getting them here we've got a terrible supply we're, ter you know, we're pretty rubbish with our light bulbs I thought oh that's nice it's no, nothing like recommending you know your own company and she said uh, no if I suggest those you go to home base and go and get some light bulbs there and I said no I said no I refuse I'm not going back out in that rain not for you not for light bulbs and she said oh don't blame you I said could you please find me some light bulbs that will fit this lamp and she did, and it worked out being four pound for two. And she said, "Not very strong, you know." I said, "I don't need it to lift things. I just need it just to be a light." And she said, oh, "That's funny." So I thought, I don't know if that's a real laugh or not, but it was funny, and it just did deserve some kind of uh, recognition, but not a fake laugh. But I'll take what I can get. And uh, just before she went, she handed me a piece of paper, read it, and she said, uh, I love you. And I said, Come on, seriously, just leave me alone. I'm just trying to buy things. 
I don't need to be hassled like this. I'm not a piece of meat. So I went and I sort of paid for it. Well, I paid for it and then I collected it. It was very busy in there. And uh, so I was giving it to my neighbour to say thank you for letting me borrow his lamp yesterday. And now I've got my lamp, which is nice and bright. I got rid of the lampshade, so it's even brighter now. It's actually quite cool. I'm almost ridiculously happy about it. It's so nice. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not that nice I'm going to be groaning, but just... I just close my eyes. I feel really relaxed. Really relaxed and calm. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, the other thing is, I got an email from the university telling me that um, the... Uh, reference has been received from the referee that I gave Um, which I think is the last thing that needs to be done and this is for the masters the MSc in positive psychology that I've applied to do which starts in January. So I just need to wait. I mean, it's not that long away, is it? I need, to, I'd like to know as soon as possible just so that I can plan because the journey is about two hours a day getting there. I mean, it's not going to be every day, but I just want to, I need to figure out how many days it's going to be and whether or not I can afford to actually get there you know to afford the travel because I'll need to travel before nine o'clock or to get there to start at nine or half nine so I'll be needing to leave at six or something silly like that which means any discount cards uh, are not valid I don't think during peak time so I'll be paying full fare which is just uh, concerns me a little bit I don't know if it's going to end up costing me you know, £100 a week to travel then I'm not going to be able to do the course even though I've got a student loan for was it £10,000 but that money goes to the university. It doesn't go to me. It's a pity I couldn't get a loan of another like two thousand to cover for the travel for the year. Or well, however much it's gonna be. But they don't they don't they just cover the cost of the university course, you know, the fees. But yeah, it'll be interesting. I just need to know now. I mean, it's Monday, so hopefully, I'm hoping I should know by the end of the week. Because I enrolled, or I, I put in my admission form on the 1st of October. And within two weeks, I've been told by the um, the loans company that I'd been accepted for the loan of 10,000 that would be need to be paid off once I reach a certain amount of money in the future and that would be added on to the undergraduate loan that I got but you know I've, I've talked about this in the past getting the, the first degree was like was like climbing Everest for me 
getting a master's degree would be like reaching the moon you know as far as such a a momentous thing for me personally compared to how I used to think about myself and then to get a PhD which, well, to follow this analogy I guess it would be Mars wouldn't it but can you imagine that imagine having a masters in positive psychology how groovy would that be and it would affect everything I do not just me personally in my life and help to increase my own positivity and happiness and stuff but I integrate it into what I'm already doing online with these maybe not these recordings but some you know the recordings I do which would then help other people thousands and thousands of other people around the world will benefit from me doing that course or hopefully will benefit so it's it's an exciting opportunity yeah I'm plus I started to realise that I need to be mentally stimulated I've got an active mind it needs to be stimulated and I don't I don't get a lot of stimulation probably not as much as I need perhaps uh, I don't know a bit too much sometimes but when there was at one time when I was hammering in that nail into the wall that was very stimulating a bit too much but yeah. Anyway, I'm going to go because at least I managed to finish the story about the light bulb. It took me 77 minutes, but I did it. So, thank you for listening to this very, very boring recording. Thank you, all of those of you that leave messages, that leave testimonials, that leave me private messages. Um, such as Melanie um, Michelle uh, who else this side it's gone off it's been quite a few actually the last week or so Um, there's another lady I can't remember your name but thank you I know who you are but I just can't my brain's not uh, remembering I'd need to have the laptop open for me to look but uh, I do really appreciate uh, all of you so thank you so remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy Lots of love. Bye.